for me, the most powerful aspect of music, or art generally, is the ability to build a world to inhabit that's not this world, where you can work through emotions. With art, you can say exactly what you want to say, exactly how you want to say it, and then it's out there. And I can run on a treadmill for hours and not get the same sense of catharsis or release of stress and tension that I get from hearing a great piece of art. And when that happens collectively, it's really, really special. And people open up to thinking about things in different ways. In 1829, gold was discovered on Cherokee lands. The Indian Removal Act was born, so prospectors, settlers, and others could obtain the gold throughout Cherokee territory. Thousands of us were removed from our homes over greed. The maroon and gold in our traditional wear stands for the blood of our ancestors and the gold that was never found. We're still here. This is a platform for these young adults from Cherokee to talk about their experience in the world. There's a lot that is said about their community and not a lot of chances for that community to articulate themselves, especially on this scale and especially in, in the form of art. The thing that I'm most excited about is that it's this marriage of, of these kids being able to be activists and being able to speak on behalf of their community. I loved my role as a steward in that and being able to provide this sort of emotional musical backdrop for that. And to that end, it needed to feel like music that was an extension of what they listened to in their environment. They're really into musicals, they listen to pop music. So I wanted to try to create a sound world and a musical language that felt resonant and comfortable to them. That's why I included a, a synthesizer. And then I have my friend Eliza, who's also uh, from North Carolina, grew up here, uh, singing, and she's doing a lot of vocal processing. So that way we can create some of these textures that fit in with the orchestra, but they point in these other directions. Giving voice to people that feel marginalized and then encasing that in art. It makes it a, a, a easier to swallow the pill in that way for the audience, I think, because there's some really heavy stuff that the kids talk about. I mean, they, they decided they didn't want to pull any punches, that they wanted to say exactly how they felt and be really clear about what's happened to them, and then they wanted to be really clear that all of the trials and tribulations they faced have made them stronger. It's not a story of victimization. It's a story of transcendence. The project that I'm working on concurrent with Shio Tsehoha is called Spiritual America, and it's basically me trying to reconnect with who I was growing up and the environment that I grew up in and then who I am now, and those are two really different things, but they're the same person. There were a lot of supportive people uh, where I grew up. It was also a very difficult environment for uh, a kid that was into poetry and music, but also really into sports and other things. You know, I, I couldn't just hide being the weird kid. <laughs> like I also wanted to play basketball and stuff. And I was really fortunate to start working with Y Oak. It's an indie rock duo. They're based here in Durham. And they have a really nice crew of other folks that have moved down into this area. And, and you know, I think in, in the same way that I can feel confined sometimes within the, the classical world, I think it's the same thing for, you know, when I talk to Y Oak or other groups in the community, uh, opportunities where they can really fully express themselves as musicians is, is really vital. That's one of the amazing things about this project, about the Cherokee project, is that it's, it's really about a platform for full free expression. 